Hi, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Michael Sandler, your host on Inspire Nation, along with... CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ Show. Woo! She's been awake only half an hour, so she hasn't hit the giggles quite yet. <laughs> it's been an hour. If you've ever wondered who you are, what you stand for, and where you're going in life, then do we have the Essence show for you. Ooh. Today we'll talk about discovering your essence, trimming the fat, and culling your white elephants. That plus we'll talk about tornado warnings, a Verizon weekend, the power of the FMCA, the biology of belief, dealing with differences, being infinite, moving in 10K, heading back to New England, getting back to the water, clearing out bedrooms. Wow, we're going to do this all in an hour. Finding inner sunshine. And what in the world Michael's School of Mysticism has to do with Ooh. it. So welcome back to the show, CJ. Are you ready to shine? I am ready to shine. <laughs> Singing in the background now. <laughs> Welcome from his his morning nap. Oh, hooray. Good morning, Ruru. Uh, okay. No. Oh, he's like saying hi back to me. He is. And he'll go he'll go back to his nap in a minute. He gets up um like a rooster early, although I'm I'm uh, king rooster. I get up a long time before him and he goes for his morning walk with us. He gets his breakfast and then he goes and takes a nap. And so he's in nap mode right now. Cute. Okay, so Mike... Oh, no, he's not in nap mode. I don't He'll think so. He'll go back so. to nap mode in a minute. <laughs> Although okay. it's interesting. I know, I know this isn't necessarily the rooster show. He says it is. The rooster <laughs> show, but he, he now doesn't go to sleep in his house anymore. He has a soft dog kennel. But he goes to sleep on top of the couch. Uh, um, and, and I have to scoop him up before sunrise and put him in his house so he'll sleep for a little bit longer. But he snuggles up on the couch, and how do you argue with that? He looks so fluffy and happy. Oh, wait, so he just sit. <laughs> he'll just go to sleep on the sit down on top. And of he the doesn't couch. wake up if you guys are sitting on the couch with him. Oh no, he goes to bed at the same time we do. Oh, okay, so, got I mean, it. Most roosters and and chickens, for that matter, go to sleep at sunset, and then get up, you know, half past early. Ours go to sleep when we <laughs> goes to sleep when we wow. go to sleep. And then he'll sleep in longer. He has a, a, a very strict um, eight-hour window for sleepage. And so if you can get up before him, which means you can get up a little bit earlier than the eight hours you want to sleep. But if you get up before him, you can get your automatic writing in or your meditation or things like that. And then you can get one snooze out of him. Um, he will wake up, check out the world. If everybody's still quiet, he'll go back to sleep for a little while, 30, 45 minutes at longest. Wow. Oh, wow, like just like snooze. a kid in nap time. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, but so had, so given this tornado. is a Michael, yeah, Michael update. Yeah, so tornado warnings, tell me. Two nights ago, we had tornadoes come through the East Coast, and which is rare to say, but apparently the new norm. And so we got woken up by the reverse 911 with a nee, 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 at about 2.30, two nights ago. Oh, wow. And... I managed to scoop Ruru up and bring him into the basement of Jessica's home where we're at for a few more days. I couldn't get the kitties in that quickly into their carriers. Learned a lot about what to do and what not to do. I learned more than what not to do. Um, and so just waited in the garage for the tornadoes to pass if they were going to and kept on watching. Uh, AccuWeather I could get is a, a, a radar for every five minutes, get an image and so see exactly where the funnel clouds were and uh, skipped on by, thankfully. But it's an interesting experience and certainly a um, everything in life right now is a refining of processes and understanding what's important, what's not, what do I need to do. We have a friend who she didn't report back to us today, um, but we were watching the fires in California earlier this week and go, I'm going, Grizzly Flats. I'm going, well, why, why do I know Grizzly Flats? Know. Well, one of our dearest friends in, in all of California lives in Grizzly Flats. <sighs> and we haven't heard, chances are, but we haven't heard. So it could be. I mean, we spoke with her. Oh, my God, was she buoyant afterwards. She's like, look, probably lost our place. It just affirms what's most important. It affirms that we get to get light at this time and um, that we get to pivot. And that, her energy was amazing and beautiful. And I know if it did take place and seeing her place, it's going to be hard. But she was 
the term, and we're going to come back to it today, I'm sure, the term is to become a modern mystic, which is to rise above and to be able to see below rather than to be stuck in the belowness. Mm -hmm. And she was demonstrating that to a very high level. Mm. And this is a time period, I feel, I know you're doing it, we're doing it. We're, actually, we're doing it almost daily. We were calling it reinvention, but we can call it now the time of the pivot. Mm -hmm. You think you're heading one direction, and then it's a turn around, you're heading over here. Great. And then you're heading over there. Right. Yeah. Wow. I have a couple questions. So what are you supposed to do? So you're able to, with your phone, then get updates on when the tornado is getting close to your zip code? Or how did you know to So go? here, I, I took a screenshot of this. Let's see. Let's see if I can find the screenshot quickly. It was pretty, pretty freaky tiki. So it came through on my phone and Jessica's too, because we've had warnings before. And we're like, is that really for our area? Right. And what it says, and, and you're a Jersey girl, so you'll get yeah. this. The National Weather Center in Mount Holly, New Jersey, has issued a tornado warning for northeast Morris County in northern New Jersey until 3 a.m. Then they extended it till 3.15. At 2.33, this is where I'm going to start crying because it really actually hit a chord. A severe thunderstorm capable of producing a tornado was located over Moore's Plains or over Moorestown, moving northeast at 30 miles per hour. Hazard, tornado, source, radar indicated rotation, impact, flying debris will be dangerous to those caught without shelter. Mobile homes will be damaged or destroyed. Damage to roofs, windows, and vehicles will occur. Tree damage is likely. Location impacted, Moorestown, Lincoln Park, Kennington, Boonton, Butler, Rockway, Moore's Plains, Mountain, blah, 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 blah. Now, the, here's where the Jersey girl in you kicks in. This includes the following highways. Interstate 80 in New Jersey between mile markers 38 and 48. Everybody here knows by their exit. Right. Interstate 287 in New Jersey between mile markers 37 and 54. Precautions, prepared actions. All caps. Take cover now. Move wow. to a basement, blah, 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 blah. Heavy rainfall may occur. Take cover cover now exclamation wow. tornadoes are extremely difficult to see and confirm at night do not wait to see or uh, uh, hear the tornado take cover now wow uh, you get that at 2 30 in the morning and you're you're um <laughs> you're taking wow action. oh my gosh so at 2 30 in the morning you heard the ee, like the really loud noise on your phone yeah. And then you get that message. We're and Which is surprising. And Jessica and I are talking about this because she's sleeping in the house with her parents while she's here. Right. Because Sir Meowsers, he's really grooving in the more space. Right. Than the yeah. Arc. Yeah. Yeah. She says her phone was on airplane mode and it came through. I don't know how that's possible. Yeah. But she says, I know I put it on airplane mode. No, I've had that before when it's because uh, it can still contact your phone even if it's in airplane mode. Wow. Because I had that in Hawaii. When I had my scare. Yeah, with the boom. nuclear. Yeah, the <laughs> nuclear <laughs> nuclear bomb or whatever. It's like, oh, good. They're terrifying. <laughs> so did you? So you knew that the tornado was coming through, but you just didn't. Yeah. So you kind of were like knew something was <laughs> happening. So when you saw it, you were like, okay, I got to get into the basement. I got, I got the rooster right away, headed over to the basement. There was, uh, had I scooped up Lumi before he even woke up a little bit, he's the, 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 the really former Pharaoh one, I might have been able to get him in a soft carrier. I think I needed Jessica because I got him in, but I couldn't get it zipped in time. And he got out because he got out of his carrier in, in the RV. The other kitty got skittish and I couldn't get her either. And so there's a new workflow I've got to understand because this is a new world we live in. Yeah. This is actually our second tornado warning in a month the first the, the wow. first one was in iowa where a wow. whole series of tornadoes touched down around us and then this one mm. and so it's like we need to either come up with a protocol or i don't know what had this been a an rv bus which i think we're going to be switching and maybe we'll get there um we're going to be switching to an rv bus this fall if if everything flows i guess we could have just you know pulled up the jacks and driven off in a different direction, mm -hmm. um, which might have been a good way to go, or the tornadoes might have met us there. You don't know. Mm -hmm. But this was um, an interesting and profound experience. We're all going through these experiences now. Right, you could have think... lost everything. Had the tornado touched down, you would have lost, like, your whole house. Would have lost the whole house. I think um, we would have been okay in the basement. Would have lost two of our kitties. 
Um, I've been close to tornadoes before. I've seen tornadoes living out west. Um, so I did, even though it said not to, I stayed in the garage and I looked for the telltale with the door open. It's only 10 feet from the RV, looking for the telltale signs. Not sure what I'm going to do if it actually comes. Right. But I just kind of stood there on alert. Yeah, it seems like you just want to drive away from it. But I don't know if you can chase away from that fast enough with an, an RV. Or I don't know how enough fast tornadoes move. Well, tornadoes can move fast if you have a good, accurate picture on radar. You could probably mm. find your way through. But another one can appear. And so what they were doing is they were appearing, going back up, disappearing and reappearing in another place oh, as it came through. Gosh. So it's kind of a wild night. Wow. Oh, you poor thing. That's very stressful. Wait, when, when did that happen? That was two nights ago. And it's all part of let's 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 step back the aperture. We are being challenged during this time. And it's really interesting. COVID to me is being if I can take it from a spiritual point of view and I'm not not being callous about this at all. Um, there's a lot of suffering going on. But after COVID or COVID one, we all hunkered down. We started to dive inwards. Nothing was the way it was before. And then all of a sudden, everything starts opening back up. We're free. We're good. We're this. We're that. And now we're going back. Obviously, we won't lock down the same way as before. But the journey is interesting from a spiritual perspective. It was driving us inwards and to do things differently. Then we asked to go back to the old way. I want things back the way they were. Mm -hmm. And here comes Delta saying, no, you can't go back. And so these experiences, whether it's a tornado warning, whether it's, it's, it's a, a brush with illness, a brush with death, everything is challenging us right now to do kind of mini life reviews. Yeah. Who are you? Where are you going? What's important? What matters most to you? Mm -hmm. Friend going, you know, we got our kitties out, everything else is replaceable. Right. Me going, gosh, I really want to figure out a way to get my kitties out, everything else is replaceable. Yeah. Getting to the bare essence. And I'm guessing that's been going on with you as well because our lives seem to parallel. Yeah, well, you know, it's. Um, I think what's, what's, being par what's parallel is um, I went to the biology belief, um, or no, it's called... Uh, Getting Back to Nature or something like that. I can't remember the title with Bruce Lipton and Rob Williams, who's created this technique to um, do subconscious rewiring. And, you know, the thing that um, he said was kind of echoing what we had said, like we have been talking about and we've been talking to a bunch of different people. And it's clear to me that we've been we're asked to change. Whoa. <laughs> this little cat tail, tail walking cool. across. <laughs> It's like a, a it's like there. a foreshadowing. We're asked to change, and like you know, the little cat walks by. Yes, <laughs> we've been asked to to change, and as you said, we were all asked to go inside, and then now uh, we're asked to go inside again. Look at the cat just forewarning. <laughs> yeah. Okay, your cat is now walked in front of the mic and is now wrapped around your neck. His tail is wrapped around. <laughs> Which one is that, Lumi? This is Lumi. Hi, who's, Lumi. Who's been, he's been transformed in the RV. He is much more outgoing. He's much more comfortable. He actually came within a, a foot of Rue and even tried to do the sniff, the, the rooster's butt. This Whoa. Past week, which is just usually he, when we first got on the RV, he was hiding under the couch when Rue was around. <laughs> and now he's almost buds. Not quite, but almost. He's really come out of his shell here. He oh, definitely come out of his shell. Um, well, I love that he's here to like, he's like the Black Panther giving us a forewarning. And uh, what Bruce Lipton said is that, you know, he's like, we have a 50-50 chance. And, you know, oh, here it is. <laughs> now he's doing wheelies is the best way to describe it. Going up on his hind leg and oh pushing his God. face into mine. How can I even have a conversation with this cat? Anyhow, um, hi, Ru hi. <laughs> it's like, which animal is coming Lumi, for like Lumi? Lumi I know, I life. said Lumi, and then I forgot his name. Um, so anyways, it was, it was actually very interesting to think that we are going through some huge changes right now. And how, um, and we have a chance to do a redo. If we do it or not, it's up to us. He he made it more dire. Like he's like, it's could be the end of humanity unless we change. 
that kind of. And, and, uh, and I'm, I'm going to throw some positivity into here, which is everybody who has channeled, who's been on the show, and, and even people like Stephen Greer, who is in communication, if you believe in that, I certainly do, um, with uh, higher beings from other planets and from other realms. They all say we have made a conscious decision and will make it through this time period. It's a, it's a bumpy road. But we have evolutionary, we're at a bifurcation, but we have chosen our path. And our path means we will get to hang around. Okay. And so it doesn't appear it. It's like a rocket ship taking off. Looks like there's an explosion going on beneath you. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put the positivity in there because things like Psyche, which you'll probably get to in a minute, we can use both on an individual level. But as the individual hears, heals, the subconscious, the zeitgeist of everybody begins to heal. And then we uplift. So the, my psyche experience was that um, my I went with the, some friends, some work associates, and so um, when they said, oh, "Should you volunteer?" My girlfriend told me later that she had volunteered and and to go up in front of the audience, and she said it was really amazing because you can get you can work with a psyche instructor versus just having it you know with someone who's in the you know a participant. She said, "Go, it really makes a difference." So she didn't tell me that she just. She said, um, they said, does anyone want to volunteer? And no one was volunteering. And um, my associate says, said, like, she said, go. And I was like, okay, I'll go. So I, and, and it's also, we're working with, with the head trainer on Psyche with this program that we're working on. So I'm like, okay, I'll go. And the, the instruction was to take um, like 11 statements that you actually may be preventing in a subconscious program for you to like really um, – fully embrace psyche so there are a whole bunch of questions so i'm assuming that like one of these 11 will be picked so i'm just going up there and i'm muscle testing and and they go through all 11 of which i'm good with all 11 which is extremely unlikely according to the instructor and um, who i talked to later at dinner and uh she said what what she's like well i'm like well i do have something that i'd like to work on and um, the weekend before, I think I was telling you that um, my body, like, you know, different people are going through different things during this transformation. And for me, it's really hitting me on a body lo- level, specifically my body feeling safe in this world. And I think I've had many lifetimes where I've not been safe in this world. Um, so, um, and the last time I went through my chiropractic um, adjustment, the thing that I picked up when I tuned in intuitively was that my, I was like fearful that my body couldn't handle being infinite because, you know, as we move more and more in our spiritual practices, we recognize there are one with the universe, the universe is infinite, therefore we are infinite. And so my body was like, nah, you have this physical boundary called your body and you're not infinite. And even though I've had experiences over this last year feeling like an infinite heart, which somehow my body was like, okay, infinite heart. That can be infinite. The, the rest, not infinite. Negotiating. <laughs> I just, I guess that my body just couldn't, just wasn't grasping it fully. You know, our poor bodies, they have a, a, a longer and harder time to integrate than, like, say, our mind. We can change our mind like that. Our bodies are still, like, trying to integrate everything. For me, at least. My body is trying to integrate everything. So, um she said, what do you want to work on? I said, I'm big and I'm infinite. So she's like, okay. So oh. we did this psyche process, which involves, it's very Donna Eden, like, you know, you cross your arms, cross your legs, you muscle test and you just hold. Um, but I think the difference is that there was so much energy in the room. Um, so, and I, and, and I thought about when I was thinking about this, I thought I'm going to do something big because there's so much energy in the room. I'm going to be supported by the energy here. Yeah. So I sat there and um, as you know, my, I'm, my constitution is like very fiery and air. So energy moves through me. Um, I feel energy and it goes through me very quickly. So, and there's a ton of energy in the room. So this I'm like holding like this and like meanwhile my whole body is shaking like it's like a volcano like you know when you shake a soda can and you open it yeah, well, and you, you were like in, in, in a church where they would do an exorcism <laughs> demons be gone and your whole body flips around like a fish it was totally it was like that experience 
And so, you know, I, I experience those kinds of things by myself in the comfort of my own home as I've been going through these transitions. Very rarely do I do that in the presence of a hundred people looking at me. <laughs> but I thought, you know, you cannot, at this juncture, like, this is what it is. If people get scared, freaked out, weirded out, you know, so be it. This is my process. I have a little bit of shame, but mostly... I'm doing this. And so I went through and just this whole, it was like a, it was like a middle mini tornado that kind of whipped through the audience. And I got, and what was interesting about the whole experience is that I got people saying to me, and and this is kind of the power of, you know, we talk about we're all one. So when one person makes a change, it ripples through everyone else. And you kind of, you're like, yeah, yeah, I believe that because intellectually, if we're all one, it must be that we're all connected. So I did this work and people were coming up through me throughout the next three or four days <laughs> asking, what was that? Um, or because they were scared or curious. And then other people were saying, when you cleared that, it cleared it in me. Like, I didn't realize that I had that until you wow. said that. And when that happened, I felt like a certain amount of lightness in my body and I cleared through that. One guy said that he was sitting there and when I was shaking, he was shaking. Like you could feel the energetic presence in the room. And because we're all connected, particularly in a group when you're sitting watching a healing, he felt that and he's like, oh my God, I was shaking during the whole time. I was shaking when you were shaking at the same time. Um, And then people who are like, oh, I just realized I have to clear that. So so anyways, that was just so, um, it was really cool to see how we are all connected and how that just like rippled through the room. Um, <laughs> hello. I know. It's <laughs> a little like, hard to keep yourself. Keep I know. His tail is in my face. His face is in my face. He's a lover. Oh, <laughs> cutie pie. So yeah, so being infinite, that's what I was working on. And um, it was really cool. It's a very simple process. <laughs> Oh do my need, gosh. Do you, need, do you need food? Oh, there, there's some food up there for you. All right. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, that was very interesting. And um, I do think if we are willing to do our individual work, um, mm-hmm. it ripples through. And it, that was the coolest thing to see is that I was doing my individual work and immediately it was rippling through. And sometimes it would be like the next day, someone's like, I was thinking about what you said. What specifically did you say? Because I know that it hit my system very deeply and I don't know what it was, but I need to work on it. So it's very interesting watching that. It's why something I used to say is completely wrong. I used to say, wrong, we'll put that in quotes, no judgment. I used to say the time of the cave is done, uh, that the monk must now come out of the cave I must be among the people because we need the help here. And I was wrong because the frequency shift that you go through as you're clearing and clearing and healing on your path affects everyone in the collective. Yes, it affects people more specifically in a room when you're around people, but it will have a profound effect on the vibration of the entire planet, no matter where you're at. And so just by doing the work, listening to this show and saying, okay, I'm going to do the work and choose whichever work you want, do any work. I'm going to do the work, which means we dive in, we work on ourselves. That helps you. That's going to help your family members. It's going to help your friends. It's going to help your coworkers. It's going to help and it's going to help and it's going to help. I have a really interesting thing that I was talking about with my own spiritual teacher. So I have a spiritual coach who's um, been watching me throughout the last couple of years, year sorry, a year or two years, I don't even remember. And um, he said that, and, and I'm sure you're feeling this, right? I know I've talked to you about this. So as you clear more and more, you do the work and you clear more and more of your material, it means that you're closer to feeling the collective energy of everyone else. Then, because I know that you'll be like, I'm really upset and I don't know why. And then you'll find that, you know, there's a hurricane, you know, so, or, you know, whatever there is, or Afghanistan, you know, whatever the, there's so many different things that we could be upset about, but you feel, um, you feel the collective energy around us. And he said, so as you do the work, you'll feel more the collective. And in fact, 
you are more the collective than you are your individual personality. So it's less Michael and more the collective that you're doing. So, but you'll feel it mm -hmm. because Michael and CJ will still feel the collective and, and you'll feel those parts of you that are unhealed still. And so really what you're mm -hmm. asked as a bodhisattva or whatever you want to call yourself is you're asked to help tune into the collective, which you are and which I am, and feeling what needs to, what's hitting you at that time and clearing that. So that's your way of healing the world through. And, and I think what that means right now is we're going through this pivotal time. And so I'm feeling things very deeply and lots of stuff is coming up much more rapidly. And it doesn't feel like I'm like, I thought I worked on this before or what's happened, but it's, it's actually at a higher level that you keep on spiraling around and um, um, but it's very it's very deep and it's very um, it's very deep and it's very integral in some way so like when you remove it that fear it actually affects everyone so anyways it, it, it helped me just knowing like oh I get it that's why it's like that's why these last 18 months you know, six, whatever, how long for COVID has been here has been some of the hardest healing work I've ever done. I mean, it's been physically challenging, emotionally challenging, um, you know, times where I'm like meditating and crying and I don't even know what I'm crying about. Yeah. Um, there's no conscious understanding because it's, it is your consciousness, but it's kind of not you're collect connecting to something else. You know, why do I start crying when I'm reading a, a, a reverse 911 from two days ago? Yeah. You know, what is what is it that I've hit on that may or may not even be mine? And I think it's the collective fear yeah. that I'm hitting on because I've been near tornadoes. I don't ever need to do a dance with one, but I'm okay. I'm yeah. not freaked out. But you're right. We are we're all tuning forks and the more that you start to clear your work the more you that you tune into the fork of everyone in which case you've got a bigger job to do keep on clearing yeah yeah and and know that it's making a difference because i think that personally i think oh i'm just so self indulgent i'm just doing all this Perfect. clearing work right and like shouldn't i be going out and helping other people but you are helping other people, but it's such a far jump from how we can, how we think about it normally. Um, but it's, you are helping people. It, it, it's interesting. You know, there's the Einstein quote, the problem is never solved from the level at which it was created. And like I was reading an article yesterday um, about the UK and, and the new report on the climate and we're on the brink and so the UK is looking to pass some legislature, and I'm probably butchering it, but the, the cornerstone of the legislature is we need to drill more and continue all of our oil drilling to pay for all of the green processes that we're going to put into place. Okay. All and right. you're going, huh, what? <laughs> this is you cannot solve a problem from the level at which it is created. Wow. It is going to take a global shift in consciousness. Mm -hmm to where mind is creator, we create with mind, and that's both our individual mind, but also the mind of the collective. Mm -hmm. And when the mind of the collective shifts, the answers appear before us. When the mind of the collective hasn't shift, we're stuck in the old paradigm. Mm -hmm. So doing the individual work, individual in quotes, because we're not individuals, we are each cells as part of a human beingness. Doing the individual work is helping by design everyone mm. and so you can be as selfish as you want and say i'm just going to work on healing myself i can't handle working on anybody else perfect first off your heart expands and you find that you start helping other people in ways okay. just you become the bodhisattva which is basically the, the buddhist vow that i am going to do everything i can to serve others and help others in in, in layman's terms but more importantly your frequency changes mm -hmm. and you are not just a transceiver or a receiver. You are a transmitter mm -hmm. and you start transmitting at a higher frequency on the dial. Mm -hmm. And actually this is the conversation, the context in which we were talking about is, all right, if you are a transmitter, so I'm sitting there making some guy 
you know, in the audience, <laughs> sitting like 40 feet away from me, Someone's Shay. Like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know, how do you transmit from a place of um, power but responsibility? And so this is what we were talking about. Like if, if, if whatever is happening to me is um, allowing me to transmit more, um, what do you do? And, you know, it was about, what, and, and where we came from the conversation was about tuning into yourself because it's not about you going in and helping everyone because I'm a, like, I'm trying to help everyone. When I wake in, everyone else will help, get, be helped. And, you know, it's like not like a, I'm doing a go Reiki on you. Not that I have any problems with Reiki, but like when Reiki is done well, it's just like hands out and energy moving through you. It's never you. And um, that was the main message is um, to... When you're working with people, you tune in and you hear what they're saying, but you're tuning in from a CJ standpoint, not a, you know, Michael standpoint, you know, and like, oh, I'm trying to help Michael, Michael, you know, it's like, no, you just kind of tune in and you speak from the place of your interiority because that's where you and I meet in, in the deepest sense is from our interior place of wisdom where we're one so you talk to the oneness within yourself which is automatically going to connect with the oneness in you i don't i that i thought that what he said but that's how i interpreted what my teacher said let's riff off of this for a minute ho pono pono mm -hmm. a beautiful hawaiian healing and forgiveness prayer that honestly has nothing to do with the other person mm-hmm you take the other person and you put them to me, my, the Michael version of Ho'oponopono. I like imagining, I mean, usually I have a gold coin here. I think we put it away recently. But I imagine taking the imprint of an individual, putting it into a gold coin, taking the gold coin and dropping that imprint, the essence of that person, in through your third eye, down in, down into your heart, mm. and then letting them go. You mm. put the imprint in. And then you say four lines. You can say it in any order you want. I love you. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. To and for yourself, not the other person. I love you. Please forgive me. I am sorry. Thank you. You're he healing yourself. But because we are all one, you are healing, helping heal them in the process. Well, I don't really want to help heal them. Well, you want something about the relationship to change, don't you? Yes. And by helping healing yourself, you're helping heal them and you're helping heal the you-ness that is both of you. Mm. It's always just one arm fighting with the other foot. Yeah. It's the same being. It was very interesting. Um, you know, what What was interesting about going to Taos, New Mexico, where I went for this workshop, um, was, um, and the people who came from all over the country to go there, is that... Um, there really is such a wild, we know this from reading the news reports, but there's just such a wild difference in terms of whether people wear masks, what they think about vaccinations. And in Seattle, really? I think I would describe as like, no one has even, man the mask mandate happens on Monday. Um, before I left, people, I saw everyone was wearing masks. Like we, everyone here wears masks because with the Delta variant. And I was kind of an outsider because I would forget to wear the mask because we hadn't been wearing it and I hadn't been reading the news. But um, everyone here has masks. The vaccination is probably 70%. I don't even know what it is in the city of Seattle, but it's really high, probably some of the highest, you know, in the country. Um, so I went all of a sudden to a world in which we had Texans and Floridians and people who were not from, who did, and they really, and there was just such um, a, a great divide when I would be having lunch and talking to people about, um, their beliefs. And, and it, it was, um, as my spiritual teacher talked to me about it, cause I was like, wow, it was just so interesting. Cause there's a certain rigidness. So, um, you know, it's like, here's what it is, here's what we should do. And, you know, and, and I, I normally can soften and open up and go, wow, how come you think, you know, like what's, you know, I've done that so many different times. This time the rigidness was met with inside of me, like a certain amount of rigidness. Like, no, you can't, you know, and it was interesting when that happened because I didn't want to say anything out loud because I knew, one, when, when you hit something that's rigid, 
it's very hard to change it unless you come from love. And I couldn't come from a place of love. So I just sat there and just like digested all of the hatred, anger, and vituperation of the other person, which was in complete contrast to mine. My which own is feeling. fear. Yeah. It's all fear from whatever side. I don't know how health became sides, but from whatever side – it is going, I, I'm convinced, so I'm not a conspiracy kind of guy, although there's just stuff that's going on, and we know stuff is going on. That's not yeah. conspiracy. It's just stuff. Yeah, and I agree. A lot of but the stuff I've heard, I'm like, yeah, that's plausible. Yeah. There is so much fear that makes it easier to control a population, whatever that means. Right. So, I mean, and and what we're being gifted with from any outlet, I don't care if you choose the A A by C ABC Love Outlet. Every I don't mean ABC <laughs> Network. I mean, I mean just the Love Network. Whatever network is all fear driven right now. Yeah. And IQ points are going down. They're sloughing off by the thousands, <laughs> and we're becoming stupid unless we choose to go back to love. Yeah. But when you say it's this way, what you're not, you're not speaking for you. A taking approach is a mystic. We got to go to a higher level and say, whose idea is that? Where did it come from? How do I know this? That to me is a white elephant challenging everything. How do I know that's true? Do I, have I done them experiments myself? Because I can go online and find anything that proves anything right now. Anything that proves anything. Yeah. So it was, it was very interesting. I went, went through a lot of conflict in terms of whether I should wear a mask, whether I shouldn't wear a mask. I'm so curious what you did and what you said and how you, how you navigated this internal dance. Well, my internal dance was, um, it's not necessarily based on logic, um, but I thought, okay, you know, I'd read before I left that the Delta variant could be spread if you actually – don't wear even if you're vaccinated and you don't wear a mask you can spread the delta mm -hmm. variant and so i thought okay what's the responsible thing to do because i am vaccinated i know that um, i probably have a lesser version of whatever is going or the delta variant i'm not going to die but i could spread it to other people so what is my moral responsibility when i go with a whole bunch of people who are unvaccinated and not wearing a mask and so I felt very conflicted because part of me is like, well, you have a choice just like me. You've chosen not to wear a mask because you believe that this doesn't exist. So, you know, I'm not going to wear a mask. So there's that one level of thinking. And then it's like, well, just because, you know, then, then the other level of thinking was, you know, I love you and I don't want to harm you. And um, I believe that I could harm you by not wearing a mask. And so there's just this this pinging back and forth between these two um, places. And then when I got there, I think I realized like the best way to love you is to support your beliefs that you're safe. So when I wear a mask, it kind of reminds you that it brings up the beliefs that you're not safe. There are people against you because they don't believe what you're believing. And I'm going to be safe regardless, but it, what's going to harm you most will be, me wearing a mask and you feeling like I'm not with you in your belief system. So I decided not to wear a mask, but it was very, it was very hard. It was actually a very hard decision because based on my own belief system and what I had read, it was the most responsible thing for me to wear a mask. And then when I got home, because then I'm in a different operating system, I got a COVID test and I'm fine. So, you know, I was with 100 people all without masks from all over the country that have flown on all sorts of planes, internationally, whatever, to get there, and I was fine. So, you know, I don't know what, it, what to take away from the scenario aside from, you know, if you're in a high vibrational field, maybe it provides some protection. Um, I frankly, you know, I, I went back and forth because I thought I, I'm vibrating higher, but I'm not perfect. I'm not vibrating at a high vibration all the time. And if the Dalai Lama and a series of my teachers, who some of which are awakened or very highly awakened, are getting vaccines, then what makes me think that I'm vibrating at such a high level <laughs> that I'm not going to get? So I just went through all of the machinations of my belief, dealing with differences and 
what I realized is that I could feel the collective energy of the yeah. rigidity. And normally I'm not rigid, but I was very, I hit a point in which this vac vaccine and mask was a place in me that was rigid. And I was able to move past it, but it was really affecting my relationships with other people. And yeah, it took a, it, I had to do psyche on myself during a psyche event because of the <laughs> participants in the psyche event. I look at this though as so cool. We as teachers, I'll use these quotes here. We, oh, I've got it together. I'm this, I'm that. No, the challenges are going to meet you where you're at. Yeah. And you're going to be forced to turn that mirror inward again. Yeah. Turn that magnifying glass on and go, wait a second. And it sounds like you did it as beautifully as you can because you are a biological system at the moment. And the biological system is receiving the signal of fear from everyone. That's the rigidity. Plus, it's going to the amygdala and saying everybody else is in fear. It's time to get in fear fear it's time to be in go mode and you're being hit with fear of mask fear of not mask fear of vaccine fear of not vaccine but also fear either on a conscious level of judgment or just fear of the tribe we don't right. want to upset the tribe as well yeah and 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 i can see like from the valid points are i don't want to be brainwashed, you know, and so people are reading things and they feel like they're being brainwashed. I don't want, I don't want, I want my freedom. I want to take a stand in the brainwashing that is happening. So I understand like the, uh, and respect those other perspectives. They're just so different than the one that I was taking at that moment. And I, I had to do the balances, you know, I'm doing my psyche balances and it's like, I'm, I, what I am intolerant of intolerance. So what would be the, and you can't say negative statements. So you say the positive, like I'm tolerant, I'm tolerant, I'm tolerant, I'm tolerant. And then it moved to like, I'm loving and accepting, I'm loving and accepting. And so what was interesting for me when I did that work, it was um, related to my mom who, you know, was, um, despite anything I would say as a kid, there was nothing that could penetrate. Once she had set her mind on something, there was nothing yeah. to change her mind. And um, not only that, it came with a high amount of emotionality. So it's like, I really think, you know, it had this kind of, kind of thing. So when I would meet that resistance, I'd be like either go into like my hiding space or want to fight. And so, you know, that fear of being, the fear for me was about, like being in the presence of someone who is intolerant made me go into a fear place. So I could kind of see through working with my subconscious programming that it came from a really deep place, from an early childhood wounding, and that I needed to be healed. So, I mean, it was a lovely thing to do. And um, I don't know yet because I haven't been in front. I'm back in Seattle, so I'm with people who believe the same things I believe. So I'm not really sure exactly what yeah. will happen, but... It was very interesting to see that whole process of it's going back to what you said earlier, Michael, you know, we, we are, we're facing changes and whether we choose and are we going to be part of the problem or part of the solution? Are we going to be fearful about it or be in a place of love? And, and how do we do that as we are being asked to change and because we, the collective wants us to change. So it was very, um, it was a very interesting process, and um, I hope I navigated well. I don't know. I did my best. <laughs> so we'll see where it goes. That's perfect. Yeah. All we can do, and, and even the word best implies that we tried hard. We don't have to try hard. We just heart it out, fumble our way through, I guess, with the best intention, which mm -hmm. you did, and that's good enough. There is no clear right or wrong nobody can show anybody one article everybody will try it says <laughs> here it is in black and white right because the virus is a living breathing entity continuing to go and expand on her own path or his own path or whatever you want to call it as well mm -hmm. and so we're doing a dance yeah absolutely Okay, Michael, tell me about your life in the, in the, where are you going? So it sounds like you're about to make a transition point. 
Well, we're hitting multiple transition points as well, and, and I'll, 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 I'll be brief in the name of time here. Um, we're about to go back on the road a little bit. We're going to go visit my folks um, oh, fun. in New England, so that will be good. And then we're going to go to Lake Placid for a little bit, a little while. That will be good. Um, and it's been interesting. This has been an incredibly cloudy summer here in New Jersey with lots hmm. and lots of rain just about wow. every day. And there's there's a part of me that says, well, this is why I moved from the East Coast. This is I'm watching things going in circles because I, I left when I was 17 and left left for sunshiny out west. And then and I can't, can't handle the clouds. And, beep, 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 beep. and, <laughs> and the higher self goes, dude, make your own sunshine. You're good. Yeah. So it it's just interesting the traveling around and the looking at different places and do I need to explore and I haven't been exploring this month and what's really important and what's really necessary. And so there's a lot of evolution and growth and going to my childhood home where my parents are packing things up, they they tend to operate kind of fear based. And so they've made this really snap decision. I believe that may not be fair if they're listening to this. I, I, I don't pretend to, to, to I'm not judging. I, I don't know what's going on. I think they might suddenly sell the house oh, wow. um, like they hadn't been planned to. And then right. uh, and so I get to clear out my childhood bedroom, which they turned into a gym room. But all the stuff on the walls, all the stuff in the closets, that's all my stuff from when I was a kid. Wow. And, and that is going to bring up a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. It's going to be really cool. And then Jessica has been challenging me over the last few years. Oh, she challenges me every day. She challenged me about a minute before we started. But even though she goes, well, what are you doing? And I say, I help raise people's vibration, elevate consciousness, shift humanity. That's my job. And, and she goes, but what are you doing? Well, I, I help uh, raise people's vibration, elevate consciousness, shift humanity. Yeah, but and she would go from there and go, who are you? Who are you? <laughs> and just almost get in my face. Who are you? Like, what do you stand for? Why are you here? What's the essence of who you are? And Bill Bennett, dear friend, um, had him on the show numerous times. He's a documentary filmmaker from Australia. He's won the, the Australian equivalent of the uh, Oscar multiple times. And I was talking to him on the phone last a uh, couple weeks ago. And his wife sent something that struck me. And then uh, my automatic writing started speaking with me and I started to get a clearer picture um, that a good description of me is a modern mystic. Oh. I'm, I'm, I am, did you be a modern mystic as well? I, probably almost every guest that we've had on the show are, we are awake, we are aware. I, I'm calling it beyond enlightenment. I don't even know what enlightenment is. I am not enlightened one, what, whatever that means. But to me, a mystic hears without hearing, sees without, uh, hears without ears, sees without eyes, and knows without thought. Mm is in the world but not of the world, is able to be free and to take a higher level perspective. Mm -hmm. Getting that understanding, oh, okay, it's a label and labels can be dangerous. I understand this because we are not our label. But if I have to go with a label, modern mystic seems to really fit well. Mm -hmm. Then what are the classes I teach? Well, really, it's about mysticism. What are the shows that I have? Well, it's about mysticism. Mm. What are the books I write? Well, it's about, oh, I've got my essence. Mm. And so now I step back from that very clear understanding, du jour, it can change, clear understanding now, and I can start to both expand what I do and bring it in and bring it to its essence. Mm. There's a lot of tree trimming that gets to take place during this COVID time, what's important and what's not. And, and I, I think one of the things you have on here is, is like new home or something. Mm -hmm. it, it, we get to challenge everything mm -hmm. about what's important and what's not and come to our essence and build from there. And so, yeah, we're, 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 we're changing this month, pivoting, with the business and and it's going to now be a school of mysticism hmm. which to me sounds really exciting and cool yeah. and fun. it gets at the essence of freeing humanity 
freeing everybody from being on autopilot. Let's mm -hmm. operate at the higher level, every single one of us. Let's ev mm -hmm. make every single one of us an awake and aware mystic. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. I've been thinking about you every time I read this book. And um, it's the book on um, Alice Bailey's has this work called Seven Rays. And each of us has a soul, um, a ray that we vibrate with. And when I think, am I this or not? Um, I, I get to the one where it's about inspiration. And I'm like, oh, no, that's Michael. That's Michael. <laughs> yeah, and it's, it's about having just like this passion and dedication and devotion to that's Michael. You know, the guy who is... When you were talking, I just kept on imagining your logo. Like, I, it's inspiring. You're inspiring people. You're inspiring the nation. Thus the name, <laughs> Inspire Nation. And the light bulb, I think what's the light bulb, right, which is your logo, is the thing. Like, you're a bright light to inspire people to, that's who you are to me. And I think who, I don't know, I'd love to hear when people see this and put comments when they hear this on what Michael is to them because I think that when I read that I'm like well I inspire people but I'm more I'm more of the of the different different types I'm like the creative person that tries to create harmony like that's more what mm -hmm. like if people were to describe me you're walking talking feng shui yeah maybe <laughs> yeah I hoped I, I know I, and it's really hard to see yourself right but because I, I, like I'm like what am I am I one or seven or not you know but like I can go and say, and each time I read the one that's about inspiration, I'm like, that's Michael <laughs> every single time. So, yeah, it's um, I'm so excited I that you're doing that this. Remark. What? I said yeah. I resemble that remark. <laughs> yeah, well, that's like your, you know, there's each of us has a soul mission, and the more we can become clear with what our soul mission is the more we can align thus, you know, or your essence, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, now you're kind of like, goo, 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 you know, pivoting your shows and your guests probably based on more clarity about your soul mission. And that I think is happening. It's the opportunity for every single one of us at this juncture. There's like, you know, it's like the pressure around us to create the diamond is there, you know, and, and, and what is the diamond? It is our essence, a part of us that is brilliant and that's shining. But we have to do the work, right? To like when the pressure is around us, asking the question that, that Jessica was asking, who am I? Why am I here on earth? What am I supposed to be doing with my sacred? What is my sacred duty? And how can I do that in the most effortless, beautiful way? And so, I mean, I think what's great is that you're going through what I think all of us are going through, but we may not be aware that we're going through that is this kind of self-identification of who am I? Self-esteem going like, I'm that and I love it myself and I, and I'm, I feel so proud of myself for doing this. And then self-advocacy where you're like, not only am I doing this, I'm getting a high five from the universe and things are just clicking and flowing because this is the path. Once you say, who am I? And you feel proud and you move more towards that. Then the universe comes to meet you halfway at any juncture. So mm -hmm. I'm very yeah. curious to see what happens to you as you start click, click, click and aligning. A last thought on it, and I'm looking at the time we, we get to, to, to wrap things up here. I, I was writing a book earlier this year, and I had to put it down for us to, to get back on the road. And I got uh, maybe a third of the way through. It might be a stretch. might be more of a quarter. But I got well into this book and, and built up a head of steam. And I don't like putting down a book once I'm working on it, but I, it's life. You put it down. Recently had the opportunity to uh, find a new editor, believe I found a great editor, and I went and scooped the book back up, and I picked it up to write. Mm. It wasn't there. No. Wow. The book was gone. Book. Table of contents there. Introduction there. Chapter one there. The rest of the book gone out of my Google Drive. <laughs> oh, my God. Gone. Yeah, it's meant to be gone. <laughs> and I did not get upset. I did not say all is lost because it's a co-creation, me and the universe. If it comes about once, it can come about again. It'll come about at a higher level. 
But that was the day that Modern Mystic popped into my head. Mm. And I asked, all right, automatic writing, all right, spirit guides, angels, you guys are a little bit tricky and sneaky here. Am I meant to write a different book right now? Mm. And they said this, only if you're ready, mm. will you choose to write a different book? Mm. It's all about that choice. Mm -hmm. and, and I said, oh, heck, yeah. And they started in earnest with me. Stop because we're putting together a whole nother program this fall uh, to help people. We've been doing so much in the angel side of things that people are knocking on the door for an angel program. So I'm going to make an angel and spirit guide that has to do with mysticism. So I'm going to bring it all into mysticism. Um, but it was really cool how that door just went <laughs> closed. And I can choose to fight it. Poor me, lost, blah, blah, blah. Or I can go, wait, there's a magic door opening here. I'm going to choose. And they said, it's up to you. Do you want to choose it? Mm -hmm. That is such a wonderful story. <laughs> we all get to make that choice right now. Is yeah. it a victimhood? Is it a rising up? Is it a terrible time? Time. Is it a glorious time of magnificent, challenging change? Yeah. How do we choose to see it? Yeah, how do we choose to write our life story? And do we see COVID and all these other things and our return back into the cave potentially as another opportunity to dive in at a deeper level and find our own essence? Or do we see it as being a victim and do we go into fear and... I just hope that everyone chooses love and can do whatever they need to do to work with their fears. And I send everyone love as they go through the process because um, every single thing you do helps us collectively. Woohoo! Woo and as a strange random note, that color looks great on you, CJ. Really? Thank <laughs> yes. you. I haven't that worn this green. color in ages. <laughs> I was gonna. Green. I was gonna wear a color just like yours, of course, because we always color coordinate, even though we're not trying to. And I thought, oh, no, I'm gonna wear green. I really love this color, and I've forgotten that I love this color. So thank and you. And I love it too. And I, I saw it on a car recently, a a car that was custom done, and it had that very color. And I was telling mm. Jessica, I love that color, and <laughs> I don't have anything in that color. Well, I just came up here so that you can see the color in front of you. Perfect. <laughs> Any last words you want to share with people, CJ? I'm good. And uh, I think I've covered this as well. So for everyone out there, this is Michael Sandler and... CJ Lou from the Fired Up with CJ show. Saying, be well, have fun, dive in, play with this time. Really play with it and play with the essence of who am I? And then above and beyond all else. Shine, shine bright. bright. Woohoo! <laughs>